Good morning and welcome to Innova Systems What's New for SolidWorks 2015. We're going to be going through a number of themes with you today. Uh, the first is how we can improve your everyday productivity, enabling you to get your work done faster and easier, how we can help you optimise your work process, uh, reduce your operational costs and solve more design challenges. So the first section is improve your everyday productivity. So we're going to show you how we can focus on design, not CAD, get the information you need quicker and faster, uh, and work quickly and easily with an enhanced user experience. And that's the first thing we're going to start with, the enhanced user experience in SolidWorks 2015. So if we switch over to SolidWorks now, the first thing we'll see is that the view selector has been enhanced in this release. So we can now rotate around the view selector, making it a lot easier to get to areas that we want to. You'll also see that the pl uh, the sort of views that are hard to pick will fade in and out of uh, view for us to make life easier. Also, if we hover over any of these, you'll see on the right-hand side we get a thumbnail preview for each of them. So it's a lot easier to ensure we pick uh, the right view that we want the first time. Another area that's seen some improvements is uh, relating to hiding components or showing components. So now if we click a hidden component, it will appear transparent on the screen. Again, just making life a little bit easier for us to ensure that we unhide the correct component the first time. If I select those two like so, uh, I'm just going to show those items. And another area that we've got with an improvement is the isolate command. So we can now isolate components while we're editing them, but we can also isolate components from things like a common mate. So I can right click on this mate that I've added to my favorites folder here and isolate those two components directly from that mate. What I'd like to do now is just save that away as a display state. I'm going to call that casting, like so, because it's showing the two cast components in my design. And if we go into our configuration manager and take a look at that casting display state, what we'll see is we've had some improvements, again, to the properties uh, for display states in this release. So just underneath here we can now choose to hide new components uh, in this particular display state. So we've called this casting. We wouldn't want any additional components, uh, so maybe some of the mechanism on the inside to be shown in the casting display state. So we can select that option and specify that it only applies to this display state. So now any other components we add will not be shown. If we just open up a component, we'll look at some of the other improvements sort of filtering down at part level. So one of the first ones uh, that we've got is a new dynamic referencing visualization system. So if we just expand some of these folders here and I hover over uh, any feature in the tree, you'll see that it shows me where the references are uh, that are being used to create either the sketch underneath the feature or the feature itself. So it can be a lot easier for us to trace references around our model now, rather than using the parent-child option available on the right-click. Talking of the right-click menu, that's been revised for 2015, and we've now got quick access to things like the selection filters here, so I can turn on filter faces, for example, and just grab hold of a couple of sets of faces like so. Another sort of addition to the right click menu now, let's say we click off those faces and I right click again, is something called previous selection. So if you do accidentally mispick or unselect something uh, that you wanted to keep selected, we can now click previous selection and return to the selection that we'd, we'd got. So we'll just turn our filter faces off now. So another area that's seen improvements is related to hard to pick entities. So I've got a very small face uh, here, a filleted face between these two edges. What the system does now is it will detect multiple small movements. So if I just do that again, you'll see I'm on an edge there. And if I move really slightly, you'll see the filter automatically turns on to faces and allows me to pick those much smaller, harder to reach things. So that can be uh, a real time saver for helping you grab uh, things that are, are often difficult to get hold of. If we just select a, a number of different faces here, 
So we'll go around and grab a couple of bits and pieces here. Another thing that we can do in 2015 now is create something called a selection set. So when we select multiple items we can save away that selection and it will add itself to the feature tree into a folder called selection sets. So I can go through here uh, and see those multiple selections that I've saved. This can be a real time saver if you want to apply say bolted connectors in simulation uh, in this particular example or alternatively if you want to colour a number of faces with a different appearance it can be really useful for that type of thing. Another area of improvement is the right click or the uh, shortcut menu sorry here uh, we can right click on this now and customise that so I could go in and say that perhaps I wanted a whole wizard feature to appear on that toolbar and just say OK and then when I bring that back up you'll see my whole wizard tool is now added to that toolbar so you can fully customize that for how you want that to be so we'll just go ahead and we'll add in uh, a hole here just to finish off this model like so we've also seen the toolbox uh, has been enhanced as well so if we just go ahead and add that in uh, and configure it we'll take a look at some of the options that we've now got within here so the first of those, if we just browse to a particular standard, uh, we'll just let that load up, is a new option to allow for custom configuration names. So in previous releases we were constrained by the default configuration name that the system would generate. But now what we can do is toggle on the option to allow custom configuration names and the system will actually allow us to generate any names that we want. Another uh, change that's been made here is regarding the display options for toolbox components so now we've got choices over how we show the component name uh, in the feature manager and how we show uh, different bits and pieces in the builds and materials so we can choose whether we want to show the configuration name, the description, file name, part number in the feature manager and the same is true for builds and materials as well so we've got a lot more flexibility over the display of that kind of thing so if we just return back to our assembly, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll add in a couple of toolbox components now. So we'll just snap those into place. And what we can see is that the file name is being shown in the feature manager here. But if we go ahead and insert uh, a bill of materials into this design. What we can see is that the configuration name is shown here for that component within the part number field in the bill of materials. So much more configurable options for the toolbox there. Okay, so we've seen the new view selector, the improved configuration switcher, improved highlighting of hidden components, improved isolate functionality, some improvements to display states, the new graphical reference viewer, uh, some selection enhancements, the ability to customise pop-up toolbars and finally the toolbox enhancements. Now we'll switch over to Alex, he'll take us through the improved sectioning and exploded views.